Yo, what up, Jack Light and Shark Heads? Welcome to Jack Light and Shark, episode 11. 11. I'm Jackal. As always, I'm joined by my swoleless friend, the shark. <laughs> Yo, what up, guppies? This is the swole shark. They call me the swole, the great swole shark. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Makos are really that swole. Uh, I'm a great white shark. Thank you. Oh, no, true. tiger shark. That's right. Tiger shark. Tiger sharks, sharks aren't that swole either. They're hella swole. It's actually like pure muscle. <laughs> it's like mar- some cartilage, and then the rest is pure muscle. They look a little puffy. That's from all the trend. <laughs> What's trend? What What is trend? I'm pretty sure it's uh, short for trend balone. Pretty, I think that's a uh, steroid. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me check that out. Let me check that out. <laughs> Tren while he's baloney. Look, I'm Tren baloney. We're gonna introduce you to the newest member of the Jackal and the Shark family. I got a new dog. His name is Harlos. Say hi, Harlos. He's just wandering, <laughs> just wandering around. He's a uh, Shih Tzu Bichon Freeze mix, also oh. known as a Shishan. Uh, can I ask about your uh, budget on this dog? <laughs> Can we can we talk about that well, on the air? We we financed him, so the budget Hold is on. more for, affordable. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> they financed a dog. Okay. Yeah. Uh, end of story. They needed to get a payment plan <laughs> for a pet. I got a dog once. I paid like a buck fifty plus. Dog food? <laughs> yeah, we we bought both our dogs from the pet store. But it wasn't a, a teacup poodle like this one. This isn't a teacup poodle. He's going to be bigger than that. Not yet. You let him stay in your office and hang out so you don't completely hate him. And then, <laughs> what did he do in my office? He took a shit. He did. So now he is banned. I should have told you the sign. When he starts sniffing around really fast... He he's he's got to take a poop. He was whining at the door. I just thought, oh, I, I miss Jackal. Where's Jackal at? He abandoned me in here <laughs> with this vicious, he was trying swole to ass shark. Run out the back door into the the wilderness. <laughs> Couldn't let, let that happen. Trying to rejoin the hawks would have got him. His ancestors, the wolves. <laughs> oh, the hawk. <laughs> oh, there's dinner. No, that's my dog. Every I time I paying him take him out yet. there to go to the bathroom on the side of the studio, I I'm like. I don't put him on a leash. He just wandered around. I'm like, what if a hawk came down and grabbed him right yeah. now? I have no way of. You got it. So run. I got my head on a swivel. I'm like looking for that. I'm like, no one's coming to get my dog. Got to keep him on a. I'll grab that bird by its throat if it comes down here. A metaphysical <laughs> leash. Choke slam it to the grass. <laughs> <laughs> grab him with the teeth. And then give it with a tombstone pile driver after that. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I would do a, a stone cold stunner on uh, it. Bam. Maybe an RKO. Be awesome. <laughs> An F5, an FU. That reminds me, uh, speaking of professional wrestling, I watched Joe Rogan's uh, new comedy show. Oh, yeah, show. he talks about pro wrestling in there. And he's like, I don't have a problem with gay people, and I don't have a problem <laughs> with people that are into pro wrestling. <laughs> I just think but they're the same, same thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> that one was pretty good. Classic. That one and the one about, uh, was it John Adams? Oh, no, um, Jefferson. Jeff- Th- Thomas Jefferson, yeah. Yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, being like speaking guys, about the constitution. Yeah, he's like, you guys didn't write any new shit. I wrote that fucking thing with a feather. I wrote it with a feather. <laughs> yeah. You have all this new technology and shit. You couldn't add a few lines in there. <laughs> Lazy ass. Oh yeah. So trenbolone is an androgen and anabolic steroid of the nandrolone group, which itself was never marketed. Oh, it's a. Is it just exclusive to sharks? Well, I'm I'm full of uh, Tren, I eat Clen, and I'm full of Synthol for those areas I couldn't fill out properly, <laughs> just genetically. <laughs> Have you seen those guys with Synthol? Like, did they overdo it? Probably, yeah. their body dysmorphia is so severe. It's like they have these huge-ass biceps, tiny forearms, tiny shoulders... And the only thing they're ever doing on camera to show off how big they are is curls. curls. Yeah. It's like, you, the only, you know when you see a dude with like big traps 
Yeah. You know he earned those traps. The, you don't, you're not just born with huge-ass traps. No, you got to work for those traps. Yeah. So yeah. if you got huge biceps but you got no traps, you're not doing it right. Um, a la the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, we talked about this situation a few weeks ago. So uh, as we mentioned on episode 10, we will discuss, uh, I guess, our workout programs. I think we're just the gym fitness in, in general. I was like, just the gym in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that I think is a great starting off point. Okay. And it's huge on Is it a online. legit question or are you going to be a dick it's about it? It's a very legit question. Okay. <laughs> and I think it's a great thing to think about, especially since we're on some kind of a public forum here. The question is, what are some things that you wish you knew five or ten years ago about fitness? Mm. I'll get I'll get you started because I I mean I saw okay. what question I was gonna ask. Oh, okay, so I thought, gotcha. of some so you thought about it. Okay. Form is very important. Form may be more important than how much weight you're lifting. It is, yeah, because it's been how much you lift. If you're not using the proper form, you're not doing shit. Exactly. And I feel like I was like. Uh, what do they say? Like turning your wheels, burning your wheels. Well, I, I mean, think it's turning your wheels. I or was, yeah, I was. You weren't going anywhere. I was not making any progress. You know, I kept doing the same exercise. Exercise, I could you know add weight, but I didn't see any actual progress. Yeah. But then I watched a video. Um, well, I watched a couple. One was from Kai Green, who should be a uh, two-time at least Mr. Olympia at this point. He didn't go to the Olympia this year? I don't think no, he, he skipped. But apparently Phil Heath is taking off next year. Hmm. So Kai might make an appearance because he can finally win. Take a title. Uh, but then uh, I don't like that, though, because then it's like I can win, but right. not when you're here. But not when the like, best is you're here. Like, I want to win when he – I would want to win when that guy, when Phil Heath's there. Right. Like uh, who won this year? Sean what? Roden. Yes. But he came. I heard he came in like – the best Fit. and i looked yeah i saw him and people were like holy shit mm-hmm. like yeah and i heard phil heath was looking a little puffy yeah, yeah. he's got that that gut a lot of bodybuilders have that gut they though. do but when you're on stage and i i don't know how difficult it is because we don't have guts um <laughs> but our innards aren't you know in inflamed constantly because yeah. we're not on steroids mm-hmm. um or insulin too um but when you're on stage, you got to suck that gut in the mm-hmm. whole time you're up there. I guess maybe when you're doing like a rear double bicep pose, you don't have to yeah. suck <laughs> it in as much. <laughs> Hopefully there's no cameras from the side. But uh, yeah, you got to be really uh, strict on your on your gut yeah. when you're being judged. It was a, a year of upsets at the Olympia, actually. Yeah. Phil oh, Heath yeah. lost. Jeremy Buendia. Good. I did lost. not like him. You don't like Jeremy Buendia? No, I don't like his face. I, I don't know anything about him as a person. I enjoy him. Like, his YouTube channel is pretty entertaining. I mean... For, Who did he lose to? Hmm, it was the same guy that won last year because he was... Oh, 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 my gosh. Um, Breon? Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy kicked ass, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Buendia always brings it, but Breon brought it a little harder. Bound to happen. But yep. his YouTube's cool. I mean, it's... I enjoy watching those guys like in their element. They go through like a day in the life, you know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. What they eat, you know, what they do, you know, just kind of like what their life is like. I enjoy those. It's especially fun for like the smaller dudes, like you know, not the big yeah. Olympia dudes, because then it's more like okay, yeah, maybe I could get to that point. Someday. I'd rather much much rather look like Jeremy Buendia right. than Phil Heath or any of those <laughs> yeah, right, right, huge right. guys, you know. Yeah, I'd or, go with uh, the the like the physique. Do you know Steve Cook? They call yeah, him, oh yeah yeah they call him like a uh, mom like fitness mom <laughs> but yeah that guy i mean it just looks so natural but yeah he's so cut and it's just like very well Didn't proportioned he, was is he the guy who used to be a punter in the nfl i have no idea i feel like he, he might have huh. been a punter in the nfl and now he's no all clue. about that fitness stuff i'll look it up real quick uh videos that i like there's one he goes by the ox um evan Shoot, what's his last name? He, it's an Italian name. Who were we just talking about? Uh, Steve Cook. Steve Cook, thank you. Who's the... Um, damn, what the hell's his name? But it's uh, it's called Big on a Budget, and they give bodybuilders $50 or maybe $100 to get their food for a week. 
That's pretty cool. Evan the Ox. Oh, Evan Centopani. Yeah, that guy is cool. He gets a whole bunch of chicken, some bananas, a bunch of broccoli, and a bunch of oats for 50 bucks. And that's his whole week's uh, meal planning done. Then I watched another video of A Day in the Life of Jay Cutler. I like Jay Cutler, too. He's, he's a cool dude. He's an interesting guy. His voice is kind of funny, but... <laughs> Does he have, like, the steroid voice? Yeah, it's kind of high-pitched uh, for a guy who's huge. that big. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I probably speaking watched of high the... voices, though, <laughs> Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. It ain't nothing but a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> Lightweight, baby! Yeah. Classic Ronnie C. Coleman. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, who was the other guy? Oh, oh yeah. Speaking of form, speaking of stuff that we wish we knew, uh, Brian Pakulski. Oh, speaking of Kai Green and Brian Pakulski, uh, or B Pack as he goes by. <laughs> this guy, I mean, if you will lo- are looking for shoulders, how your shoulders should look as a, mm-hmm. as a bodybuilder, Brian Pakulski has these like it looks like he has shoulder pads. They're like these perfect caps on his shoulders. Um, but that's when I learned about the mind muscle connection. Mm-hmm. You're familiar with the mind muscle connection. James Gray just talks a lot about the mind muscle connection. What is the mind muscle connection there, Jackal? It's you want to like focus like your mind in on that muscle. You want to feel it. Right. Don't just do the movement. You want to feel that squeeze. And so I hurt my neck slash back doing some really heavy shrugs on Tuesday. And I actually had started with this injury from doing some really heavy overhead presses the week prior. Mm -hmm. So it went away over the weekend. Then Tuesday, I like, you know, restarted it. But I was just doing some like, uh, no wait, I'm just in in the studio, my personal private studio. (laughs) And uh, I was doing just like dumbbell presses with no, I'm using no weight. But like literally no weight or just like light Just my hands. Okay. I'm just doing the movement. And I'm like, okay, what am I missing here? Can I? Because I was trying to test if I could do <clears throat> overhead press this week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what am I missing? Is this gonna hurt me? So I was just doing it, and I've never and I've never felt the pain of actual shoulder movement because when I had zero weight, I was focusing on the muscles I was using, yeah, as opposed to moving the weight. And this is with no weight, and I'm like feeling the burn in my shoulders as I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, like. That mind muscle connection is yeah you need so that. damn important. I feel like you really try to focus on that with like lateral raises. Oh, yeah. I have a hard time feeling those, you know, in my yeah. shoulders. Well, especially I mean, you have to do so much damn volume to even like get yeah. to feel them. But I had a good tip on those. Like, don't mm-hmm. think about bringing the weight up. Think about bringing it out. Bringing it out. Yeah, like you're still bringing it up, Whoa. but like focus on like you're pushing it out like that. Hey, there's little things like that where you're like, shit, I never thought about that. Like those little tweaks in your mindset. Well, no, yeah, you're completely right because it feels different right now. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing it out. Oh my gosh. I think I told you about this one when you're doing like one arm rows. Uh You want to engage with the shoulder first and then pull and that hits the back that much harder. It's crazy. So I'd say those are like little things that I wish I like knew when I first started. Because then you're just spinning your wheels if you're when you're not. Exactly. And it's like, you know, you can add so much weight, but you're doing it wrong. So it's like, you're not working out the right muscle anyways. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Or it's like, you know, you're doing like, like cable rows. And it's like, try to get your damn biceps out of it. Yeah. You know, like, engage your back. I think I heard another one for cable rows. It's like, when you go, like, you know, whether it would be the, uh. The eccentric movement, or okay. is that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Basically, when you're moving forward, you want to like hinge your hips forward, okay, and then pull back, like a row. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, but like a lot of people, boat. you'll see there, they'll they'll sit there, just you know, like so right, stiff. Right, right. So Most, actually, bend forward a bit. Yeah, it's like round your back a little bit, like let the muscle get stretched, and oh, then yeah. go again. Yeah, yeah. I like so that. it's little things like that. I wish I knew. Truth. Oh, um, just from like bodybuilding forums online, <laughs> everyone's biggest thing they wish they had known earlier was half of your your fitness goals are made in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. 
And to this day, I mean, I, I can read that, you know, a hundred times a day, but it, it will still never affect my <laughs> diet. I started a new diet this week. Let's hear about it. It's it's pretty clean, you know? Okay. I like think on Monday I had some marinated chicken oh, with yeah, some, right. um, a baby spinach omelet for breakfast, some rice. Um, we went out to dinner. Oh, this was Tuesday. Sorry. Monday was like kind of a, a weird day. So it was but your first day doing it. Well, I didn't right. do it Monday cause we, it was, oh. it was just a weird day in general. So okay. kind of started on Tuesday, but Tuesday, then we went out to dinner, went to Chili's and I got a healthy option. Okay. Which is so hard to do. Got the margarita grilled chicken. You know, I, I really okay. wanted, you know, like some pasta or something, but you yeah. know, got to say no to that. No carbs. Yeah. Then we got some cod. Okay. There was like a yogurt parfait this morning, some steak for lunch. So, I mean, it's like good food, like, and I'm getting a lot of nice recipes from it, but right. I feel good so far. Okay. And who was the author of this meal plan? Lazar Angelov. Lazar Angelov. Like 20 bucks for a 12 week meal plan. And now, if we're talking about it's goal body, oh, like yeah. goal physiques, though, you know what I respect most about him is that last year he got injured and That's he got right. fat. Like, yes, he, he did. lost everything and got fat it was bad too. and now he's like yeah he came right back right back and cut yeah that guy is like chiseled ch- <laughs> that's exactly the word <laughs> but he's like premeditated from like head to toe yep like even his like facial hair is chiseled mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got someone who just styles that every day for him like oh you got a hair out of place like that. <laughs> is there a day in your new meal plan that you're looking forward to Mm. That's not the cheat the cheat day. There's a cheat day, I, I assume. I'll probably I'll probably do more like cheat meals than a full cheat day now. Okay, just you know, try to stay somewhat on track all the time. Yeah, because when you do that cheat day, mm-hmm. man, you could throw yourself off like yeah. hardcore. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna try to stick to it. You know, cheat meals here and there, and then I'll try to stick to it fairly uh, religiously for the next twelve weeks. What's nice is. Like, once you start getting the discipline down Mm -hmm. to, like, eating better. Yeah. Like, I haven't had an actual soda with sugar in it for a while. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, this is one thing I can cut out. I need to cut it out just for my sake because I don't want diabetes. Um, But now if I, like, uh, Sparkle brought me home, like, a fun size Twix. Yeah. From work because it's, you know, Halloween time. (laughs) And I ate it. I was like, okay, that's... All I can have today, as far as crap food is concerned, I and think everything's okay in moderation. You yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like the other day, there was I, had, you know, a few bites of chocolate, a few pieces. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, everything's fine in moderation. I'm not pre- preparing for a show here. Right. I'm not trying to get jacked as possible. <laughs> you know. You're not getting thrown just, off your diet. Exactly. Though, yeah. That's why cheat days can be scary, though. You're like, oh my gosh, I, I ordered a whole pizza and I only ate four pieces and I have four left over. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I'll save those to my next cheat meal, <laughs> which will be the next two meals. Yeah. I'm probably like, okay. probably most cheat meals will be like on Sundays though. Okay. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. I mean, when you're, you know, at the studio doing work, it's easier to be busy and not eat. Yeah. But when you're at home, you're like, um, I'm bored, and now I'm suddenly hungry as yeah. well. And I'm throwing in a few more meals here and there, like snacks, just because I'm hungry. And, you yeah. know, like I don't feel like I'm, like, the basic, or uh, it's not, it doesn't seem like enough food at first. So oh. I throw in a few more meals here and there, like, you know, some eggs, some bread, some oatmeal. Yeah, just something that I feel a little fuller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They say a bottle of water helps with that. I don't believe that at all. I think it's sparkling water. It's supposed to be an oh, appetite suppressant, not just water. Good call. I've and heard black that true. coffee. And those like supposed yeah. to be an appetite suppressant, but yeah, I don't drink yeah. coffee. No coffee. I'm, un- I'm an uncaffeinated freak, according to my fiance. Okay. <clears throat> That's good. Yep. All the soda at my house is decaf. We keep sh- we keep some soda with sugar in case guests come over. <laughs> But it's like, oh, they're like, oh, I, I need caffeine. No, no one says that. It's yeah. like, I just want to drink something. Another thing I'm liking about this diet is that um, I don't like to get up early. I'm not a morning person at all. Mm-hmm. But to force myself to get up like a little bit earlier and get going. I mean, I make, I make the uh, lunch and dinner the day before. But okay. the breakfast I save for the morning of. So you Because then it forces up. me to get up right. and make that <laughs> breakfast and get going. I'm kind of enjoying that. Speaking of uh, <clears throat> early risers, so I mean, getting up to cook, 
It might be a little easier. Sparkle gets up at like five every day to get her workout in before going to work. Yeah, I can't work out in the morning like that. No. I, I would feel weak and have no motivation. Can you imagine trying to like do legs at 5 a.m.? I can barely do legs at noon. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely do do legs at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's there's a there's a club for us. That's fine. <clears throat> you want to talk about your daily routine, like your weekly routine? Sure. As far as lifting, yeah. I'm just gonna throw mine out there real quick because it's it's consistent every <clears throat> single week. <clears throat> Monday, International Chest Day. Boom, done. Tuesday, I do biceps and then I hit traps. Wednesday is my off day. I go see my cousin Day Day down in Lakewood. <laughs> Thursday, I hit after the podcast, after the show. I just go and I do triceps. Just triceps. Just triceps. Ourselves. Nope. And I do a lot of volume, and I hate it. <laughs> but it's like I can't lift heavy enough for me to not do volume. Gotcha. So I'm doing like 30, 25 pounds uh, per rep, but I do seventy five overhead and then seventy five kickbacks each arm. And it sucks. I hate it. Friday, shoulders. Saturday, back. Sunday, the best day. So you only take one off day a week. One off day. <clears throat> rest is for the. Oh, what did I say? Rest is for the wicked. Some. Uh, yeah. I don't know, rest like is that. for the weak. <laughs> They say your muscles grow when you're resting, though, not when you're lifting. That's why I don't hit my muscle groups twice in a week. So I'll do biceps on Tuesday, and then the next time I hit them, I mean, I might hit them as, like, an accessory on back day on Saturday, mm -hmm. but then I come back and I actually hit them again on Tuesday. Shazam. Interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. I change mine up pretty often just because I get bored. Yeah, you're always telling me about these new... And they're all interesting, and I guarantee they all do something. Mm -hmm. I've never tried any of them, though. Right now, I'm on the uh, the BFR program. Oh, yeah. Kick. What's BFR? Uh, blood flow restriction training. So, are you using bands or tape? Bands. I bought actual bands. Actual yeah. For this. <clears throat> yeah. Are they like, um, what's it called when you have like a cut and you need to close it? You, oh, like tourniquet. tourniquet. Yeah, are these like tourniquets? No, these ones are like, I think these are like about two inches wide. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're like, yeah, a couple inches wide. And do you tie them in knots? Or no, this one has just... like um a buckle almost. Oh. So you put it through, you pull as tight as you want, and then you okay. push it down oh. and it locks it in. That sounds comfortable, actually. They're not super comfortable, oh. especially... Especially doing biceps? Well, doing back yesterday was brutal. Because like, there's like a little like strap that holds the... Uh, the slack in place. Okay. And I had it in a really bad spot, like right here. So when I was oh, doing like just scratching just you. rubbing the shit out of my, like under my armpit. Mm -hmm. So move that and it doesn't feel great still, but you're able to deal with it. Do you feel a pump? Yeah. Oh, is and it like cause, too much? No, I like it, <sighs> you know? And I enjoy, you use lighter weights because yes. you're going higher reps. So <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some you go 30, 15, 15, 15. Okay. That's like one set. You do two of those and you go 15, 15, 15. That's two of those sets. Okay. Then you always finish with like a a drop set of some kind. Describe to me what a drop set is. I've heard this word a lot, but I don't actually know what it means. A drop set is, so let's say you're doing like bench press, you yeah. know, you do like 200 for like so many reps. Pounds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> yeah. totally a metaphor or okay. a hypothetical. Right. Um you rack the weight, drop it by like 10, 15%. Okay. So you drop it to like what? Like 175? Sure. In that range? Yeah. And you bust out as many reps as you can get or. To failure? Yeah. Okay. You rack the weight again, drop the weight oh. again. Oh. And bust out as many reps as you can to failure. Okay. That's a drop set. I must have had that confused with um, what's it called where you do like two exercises at once? A uh, superset? Superset. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Superset. Yeah. And what I like about this, because you're using lighter weight, is that like I can really feel that mind muscle connection. Because yeah, when, when, you're, when you're using when you're using heavier weight, you're like also get trying to focus, get up there. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. not really. By the lighter weight, you're really able to feel that nice yeah. squeeze and that pump. Especially and, uh, speaking of chest. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I, did, I used it for chest the other day because it's like 
ba- the basic premise is, is that once your arms start to fatigue, like oh, you're it's all going to start more. to be using your chest more. Huh? I didn't think about that. Yeah, I got some uh, notes on BFR training. Some positives. Oh, yeah, throw it down. Yeah. Um, causes the nervous system to recruit the largest type two um, fast twitch fibers. Okay. Which are the ones that you know are the hardest to get and the ones that make you big. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it tricks your body into thinking that it's lifting heavier weights when you're us- really using lighter weights. Right. Right. Yeah. And then the type 2 fibers are normally only engaged once there's no oxygen left in the muscles. Oh, they're like a last ditch effort. Exactly. Exactly. So once this really helps, you know, your muscle fatigue faster, so there's less oxygen. So you, you hit those type 2 fibers quicker. Right. For- forcibly. Yep. They don't have an option. Okay. So far, I'm liking it, you know? All right. And, well, describe your weekly routine. Monday's chest. Um, Truth. International chest day. You got to hit that week off running. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday's probably going to be like legs. Oh, I'm so sorry to interject. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to make a quick note that we work out at home. Yeah. That's we why we're allowed to hit chest on Mondays. Yeah. Because if you go to any gym. If I go to the gym, I hit like legs on Monday. <laughs> exactly. No, like, no one in squat rack on Monday. There will be no benches available on Monday. Okay. So we'll move to the gym in a second. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So Monday's chest. Tuesday, we'll have your legs from now on. Okay. Wednesday, back. Thursday, shoulders. Friday, arms. Okay. Yep. Probably the, be the routine for the next four six weeks somewhere in there do you hit calves on legs day I do. or I, I, any other day no i hit them on leg day okay they're part of the legs so they get worked right. that day i've decided that my weakest i don't say my weakest muscle but my smallest muscle are is my calves my calves are probably one of my strongest and the biggest <sighs> but that's just from playing tennis. years and years of tennis right. like they're just naturally built up not really well, what sucks is like Sparkle or like even uh, the secretary around here at the office, <laughs> secretary or the tank. studio, secretary tank. <laughs> they they just naturally have these big ass calves. <laughs> like it's all genetics. I've never looked at their calves. Look at their calves. <laughs> okay. Um, the next that, time the secretary's crap. in the office and be like, "Yo, let me see your calves. I hear they're huge." <laughs> <laughs> hey, the shark says you have huge calves. Oh. Uh, <laughs> So I've been hitting them every single day I work out. Just, really? Yeah. And uh, so I guess, I mean, you can do standing and you can do sitting. Mm-hmm. I've learned a way to get the bench to work for me so I can do them seated. But I guess when you're doing seated, you want to go fast to hit those fast twitch fibers. Gotcha. But when you're standing, it's better to go slow. You want to, and they said, even if you're going to like, especially with body weight, uh, standing calf raises, which I don't do, I do weighted, but they say you should do like five seconds up, hold for a second or two, and then five seconds down. Interesting. Yeah. So like you tried doing a hundred, you're like, it's gonna take me like ten minutes. Right. You're like, <laughs> I'm not gonna wait that long. I came here just to hit calves real quick. Bust out a hundred in like five minutes. Yeah. Get out of here. Less than that. I wish I had a machine for that though, so I could do I standing just, raises. I would just throw the barbell on my back and do yeah. standing calf raises. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I tried doing it again because that's how I was doing it. I was, mm-hmm. like, holding it like I was doing a shrug. Mm-hmm. So, I deadlifted it off the ground. And then I was doing really heavy calf raises with it. But it's like it's like the arches of my feet were, like, starting to collapse. I'm like, oh, man, I can't do this. And that hurt my knees, too. But I just have bad knees. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the dog is very passed out down there. Oh, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. An H. <laughs> Oh, the C is silent. <laughs> exactly. It's H. It's yeah. It's H C A R L O S. So Harlos. Oh, I was thinking like Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. He's like, I'm trying to sleep, guys. Shut up. Hey, he's like that. <laughs> is too s- idiot. Too loud. Ah. Uh, Ayos mio. Should we uh talk about some gym etiquette and gym sins? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'll say rule number one, okay, and then you tell me what the rule is, okay? And I hope you know what the rule is. So, rule number one at the gym is 
Don't curl and squat rack. That's exactly right. And I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> or I was going to say, have you ever been to the gym? Yeah. yeah. You don't curl in the squat rack. You never you... curl in the fucking squat rack. And. Uh, you don't curl, of curl at the bench press either. <laughs> you don't. You know, you go to like the where the yoga mats are. Do your curls there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, right, they have like, those. They have those separate it. barbells. They you know, do. that you use for curls. And don't stand in front of the free weights either, staring at yourself. I saw a guy once curling in the squat rack with like fifty-five pounds total. Yeah, because he had the bar and like a couple like you know plates on each side. Get out. And I'm like, you have a bar over there. You can use. There's no reason because I wanted the fucking bench press. So of course I'm uh-huh. pissed because I'm like. Don't curl in the squat rack. When Get you, out. I mean, if you're going to curl and you need more weight than they have okay. on in, uh, any of the individual bars, right. I'll allow it. Cause like you want a, a barbell? Like you'll well, allow him to use a barbell at that well, point? A lot of gyms I've gone to have like, it's like a pyramid almost. And they have like barbells just going down like right, right, from right. like oh, 30. Oh, you're talking about like easy curl bars. Even They have some of those and just some With straight like bars too. Welded on. Exactly. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But like if... Because like they go up to like ninety or hundred right, pounds but on those static, static weight. I yeah, mean, you can't add or take off weight. Exactly. Right. So okay. when you do curl, you use those. But I mean, it's, yes. I'm saying if you want to curl more than those go up to, right? I don't have a problem with you being in a squat rack or bench press then, because probably not supposed to bench, barbell. Probably not supposed to bench press, but a squat rack I'll allow. Okay. Hmm. I mean, if you're if you're Lifting more than the easy curl bars or the static barbells can yeah. offer. Maybe you're big enough to be just, you get a gym pass. <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay, we'll allow that. <laughs> you, you're special. How do you feel about getting loud at the gym? I hate it. You don't think it no, should be no. a thing? Keep, yeah, I don't need to hear people yelling at the gym. So when you're at, well, okay, not you. So like at Planet <laughs> Fitness, they have that lunk alarm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you when you drop oh, the weights alert yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah dropping weights though like i i think okay i mean if you're doing a pr and it's an obvious pr yeah where it's like okay you're lifting more than i think i could yeah ever and you need to grunt it out that's fine but if you're yelling get the hell out <laughs> but dropping weights if you don't own the weights you don't drop the weights i hate it yeah if you're okay i mean if you're deadlifting yeah, I mean, you're doing like ollie lifts. I don't mind dropping those, like yeah, right. Yeah. But you're in the, you're in a designated area for dropping them. Yeah, and you're usually using the special the bumper plates. Bumper plates. Yeah. Thank you. And they also a lot of gyms now have like the sides of wherever you're like snatching or deadlifting at, or oh, like yeah. padded. So when right. you drop it, it's just not a lot of sound. So you're in the area designed to drop weight. Yeah. But if you're curling what seventy fives. And yeah, it's like, damn, you're huge, right? Ground. And then you toss them. <laughs> it's like, no, you're big enough to do a controlled movement. You're big enough to put them on the ground in a controlled movement as yeah. well. You're also big enough to rack your fucking weights. <sighs> um, in the right spot, uh, not just the closest, the right spot. The uh, 24-hour in Castle Rock, yep. I don't go with anymore, but when it first opened, I went there. And they're like, dumbbells aren't... Um, labeled by section where they go, like Wayne. Oh, they're just okay. so people would just throw them where the hell you they want. So you got like a bunch you're, of fives no. here, and then like an eighty. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, you couldn't walk where you got them from, huh? Unless that is where they got them from. Well, the guys yeah. Before them, were but then stupid. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go put these closer to where they belong at least. Yeah. Because I um, guarantee the, the amount 80s? of times I fixed those weights because uh-huh. I was like, went to rack mine and something was wrong. I'm like. Moving those over, fucking idiots. Let's just start paying you. Right? But I guarantee the 80s, they go near the right and lower. Yeah. Can we agree with sure. that? Uh-huh, yep. Because the lightweights are always top left. Yep. And they go in some kind of an order, mm-hmm. guys. You go light up top, and then you go heavier down below, and yeah. That's why, I like, the pyramid of, like, uh, like plates. That's why the heavy plates are near the bottom. Mm-hmm. Because they're heavier. Which one's safer? You want to lift a 45 from waist height or you want to lift it from <laughs> calf height? Which one's going to hurt more when you drop it on your foot? Boom. There was a dude when I worked at when I worked out at my apartment complex. This guy came in and he was dropping, uh, and I put that in quotes, dropping the weights on a machine. 
Wow. Yeah, people who do that are idiots. The clang. Not clang. <laughs> yeah. Clang. Control the movement the entire way through. If you can't, you're doing too much weight. Mm-hmm. Hold your form and go in a controlled movement. I guarantee it's going to be your your muscles will prosper a lot more than if you're just moving the weight and dropping it. Yeah. It's all about that eccentric, eccentric and concentric movements. Yep. Yep. There you go. There you go. But, uh, yeah, you're not supposed to let the weights touch. You're supposed to let them like hover Thank right you. above and then go back again. Thank you. You want to keep them in constant tension. Tension. And this was like a, I'm pretty sure it was like a, like a yeah. chest press. So it's like, oh, well, okay, that one's tough because I like to get a good pull from the back there. Gotcha, then yeah. Just move your ass forward then. There you go. <laughs> move your chest forward. Oh, let's see. What other? Oh, I'm going to tell you something really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's uh, episode one all over again. Oh, no. Okay. <sighs> I didn't realize this till like later on. And I attribute it to just habit. Okay. Mm-hmm. And no one said a damn thing. No one even questioned it. But when I first started working out, I would use um, spring clamps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. On the Smith machine. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I was just so scared that the earth would <laughs> the earth Shit. tilt enough <laughs> to knock the weights off. Yeah. Uh. But. That's like, it's like trying to overuse your blinker though. It's like, you can't overuse your blinker. You can't overuse clamps. You can, because there's no way in hell that that's going to fall off. Hey, you off. don't know. <laughs> what, do. if, what if I drop the weight and it like, you know, clangs a little bit and then they move outwards? <laughs> that could, it that would have to move someone. over a foot outwards. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got that much I weight on I put a lot there. of weight, okay? I had like 15 bumper <laughs> plates on each side. That's a lot of bumper plates. I am huge. How much weight is that? Uh, there were like five bumper, five pounds each. So <laughs> five times fifteen. Let's see, what's five times fifteen? What seventy-five pounds? Each side looking big. That's there. a buck fifty so buck plus 50. the bar. Does the bar weigh anything though on I the Smith no machine? Idea. I don't think it really does because it's assisted. That's interesting. I, I might research that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how much the bar weighs. You know, I would love to get like an Olympic bar. Because right now I'm using standard bar and standard plates at home. Mm -hmm. I would love to get an Olympic bar and some (laughs) bumper plates. Oh, you're on standard right now at home? Yep. Uh, Sucks. Mm -hmm. I have like, they're not metal, but they're like not soft plates. So I don't know. Okay. They're like a soft iron or something. Kind of like, yeah. So you can't really drop them or anything. But I also have like some of the uh, the mats that I lay down in my garage. So those are nice. Um. Oh, but the problem with standard plates is, I've, I s- promise you, I've seen a 50-pound standard weight. Probably. And by standard, what we mean is it's it's got an inch um, diameter hole. Yep, in the middle. As opposed to, like, what, two and a half, which is, like, a ollie standard or three inch, maybe? Something like that, yeah. It's th- m- much bigger, maybe two, two and a half. But the max you can buy at, like, Dick's or what was the other place called? Sports Authority. Sports Authority. Gart Sports back in Gart the day. Sports? You remember Gart <laughs> I remember Sports? Gart Sports. Oh my gosh. Remember I thought Gart, that was the only the one. The Gart Sports Castle. I don't remember that. That was downtown. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. I just remember the one off of like Bowles and Wadsworth. I remember that Gart one. Gart Sports by mm-hmm. Southwest Plaza. Yep. That was cool. Gart Sports. I was back in the... That's a, Way back in the yeah. day. But um, that's something if you're from Colorado, you only know. Yes, born sir. and raised Colorado, you only know. And then know. over there was Mervyn's too. Mervins, I forgot about Mervins. Mervins, cool name. <laughs> but we maxed out at twenty five pounds. Yeah, a plate. Mm-hmm. So when I'm trying to do legs day, oh no, actually I use the plates on back day a lot. I'll throw the whole. I have one hundred fifty and twenty fives, and then I run out of room. Or like when I'm doing calf raises, seated oh, okay. calf raises, I run out of room for more weight. I never run out of room for weight. I can I can load up. Damn. 230 to 250 on my bar. In 25. Well, I'm not talking not about the bar, 25, but not the barbell. So like you know like the Oh, uh, okay, yeah. That, I can like I bar. can only load up like 80 pounds right. on mine cuz So it would be nice if we can get 50 pound plates. standard plates. Yep. Shoot, we get we'd be huge right now. <laughs> I'm already pretty big. <laughs> 
I am self-described as pretty big. Pretty big. I'm huge in China. <laughs> I'm, I'm huge in Japan. <laughs> you know when in uh, Indonesia. Before I met you, uh, there was uh, talk that you were a a, fit, what, a trainer. A fitness trainer? I was for a little while. I like got, a physical, what do they call them? PT? A physical trainer? No, like a personal trainer. Personal yeah. trainer. Yeah. Thank you. I got certified in everything and all that. And I'm like, oh, great. We'll get this stupid ass meathead <laughs> coming in. But you're actually not really a stupid ass meathead. You're just like a normal meathead. <laughs> I'll take it. You're not a, a skinny wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I try not to be a skinny wiener. You're not a self indulgent wiener. <laughs> Uh, that's a Gone in 60 Seconds reference there. I don't know where I got Skinny Wiener. Oh, Skinny Wiener. Um, that is from Heavyweights. Yeah, yeah, he says, because, uh, uh, shoot, what's his name? The weird, crazy guy. Ben Stiller. Uh, you you know Heavyweights, right? Him, where yeah. they go to fat camp? Mm-hmm, yep. and he's like, you're a loser. You're a loser with a Skinny Wiener. <laughs> yeah, take that, Skinny guy. <laughs> skinny Wiener. Uh, what I got, is I, I got a funny gym story real quick oh I'm down I was at the gym one day and I'm on the uh, what do you call that it's like not not the fly you know but you can do like pec deck no the press downs you can do pull downs on it it's like a big thing you know what would you call that you can do press downs yeah like tricep press downs you can do you know it like goes up and down. You can do curls. Is there any cable on it? It's a cable machine. Thank. It's, oh, it's, it's, oh, okay. Yeah, a cable machine. Yeah, yeah it's okay. a cable machine. One of the big, <laughs> of the big ones. Thank you. Okay. Um. And I'm watching this guy walk around. He's Is this looking. The guy for, who got mad. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sorry. watching this guy walk around, and he's like looking for, um, one of the rope attachments, and they're all being used. Like I have one. Two other people have one. They only have like three. But then I see him literally stomp his foot and cross his arms and like storm off like, like he a threw a toddler it, tantrum. Yeah, he literally threw a temper tantrum in the <laughs> middle of the gym because <laughs> other people were using the rope attachments and i was like wow what a douche and he wasn't even big he was like a scrawny little shit that's when you adapt yeah find something else You're like okay i'm gonna save that exercise for later i'm gonna move on to the next one grab a damn bar though you know like if you want to do press downs you don't need the rope I, don't know, I prefer day. rope press downs anything. I agree, it's fine. But yeah, I'm like, but if you there's know, no ropes, you're out of luck. Yeah, do something else. Don't get all pissy. Like there's been plenty of times where there wasn't a rope, so I just grabbed the uh, the straight bar yeah. and did press downs with that. It's like trying to find a bench on Mondays. Yeah, you adapt. <laughs> you do legs. <laughs> like this is my sixth legs day this week. There's no benches. <laughs> there's nowhere to work out. Uh, what would you say is your motivation for working out? I think that's very important in in my, at least in my fitness world. I don't know. I just wish I was a little bit bigger. Okay. To, you know, when you think masculine masculine guys, you think you know bigger jacked guys. Right. So I feel like that's part of my motivation. However, I've heard that some chicks prefer the dad bod, or as I prefer to call it. <laughs> The father figure. My father. <laughs> I wholeheartedly disagree. Yeah, I mean, I don't got to worry about that. Or we don't got to worry about that. We no. already got our chicks, so. No. <laughs> well, I think we got our chicks because we looked, we looked good when they met us and we look good now. Yeah. And the point is to only look better. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You're not going to give up, right? My sister a few years ago told me I had a dad bod. Yeah. And that was like a, a huge insult. <laughs> and then you're like, okay. Screw this. Yep. I'm hitting the gym tonight. Yep. I'm like, oh, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get it. That's, <laughs> I mean, as far as my motivation, I was always the skinny dude. Mm-hmm. Like after, what, like ninth, ninth or 10th grade, I went through a growth spurt. So like my whole life, I was I looked like a normal kid. But then I grew up and I was like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, mm-hmm. But at like 145 pounds. Yeah. Can you imagine? That's pretty tiny yeah Yeah. pretty scrawny so even now i'm like super skinny still but i've at least there's some definition coming in and what's (laughs) nice so i look less like a fucking you know uh twig what what are the string beans xenomorphs (laughs) from alien (laughs) oh yeah someone called me gumby and i was 
<laughs> and I was pissed ever since that day. And I was like, okay, uh, fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to go get huge. I'm going to start calling you Gumby. That's I'm going to start funny. calling you. Oh, I'm going to start telling people how much you spend on your dog. <laughs> your your purse dog. <laughs> He's bigger than a purse dog. No, you just get a bigger purse. He's a man bag dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, It's not a purse. It's a satchel. Exactly. This is my satchel dog. It's called a satchel. Indiana Jones wears one. My boyfriend brought me this dog. <laughs> so watch what you say. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I want to actually tell you about my, my real motivation to working out. Okay. A dude ne- like beat my mom half to death. She has like a uh, loss of vision, uh, some brain damage ever since. She lives off, I, I guess, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell everybody this, but, you know, she gets disability. Mm-hmm. It's hard for her to work and, you know, there's seizures and stuff. He's been, in, he got uh, sentenced to like 10 years in prison. And not that this is like an admission of guilt for anything, you know, forthcoming. Yeah. <laughs> but my my plan, like every single, and I'm not even kidding, every single day I work out, I think of that guy. And I'm like, because I mean, at the time when it happened, I guarantee he would have just tossed me across the room. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, when he gets out and if I ever need to, you know, I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll at least feel confident that I can confront him. Yeah. And that's why I work out. That's a way better reason than why I work out. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's all superficial and shit. No, well, no, I mean, <laughs> there's also that. It's like, I want to, you know, look nice, but... I also want to kick some ass if yeah. I need to kick some ass. And I think being able to lift people off the ground is is great in terms of kicking ass. Now all we need to do is learn how to fight. Or just have people be like, look at you and be like, yeah, I'm not going to pick a fight with oh, that guy. Oh, I love that. Which reminds me of um, I, over the weekend, I met a, uh, uh, not a, not a UFC fighter, but an MMA fighter. And a telltale sign is the cauliflower ear. Yeah. So if you see a dude with huge traps or you see a guy with cauliflower <laughs> ear, you probably shouldn't fight them. I got asked if I was an MMA fighter once at the okay. bar. Some person came up to me and was like, hey, I got to bet with my friend like going over there. Like, what do you do? Like, I think that you're an MMA fighter. I forget what the other guy said. Oh, but... you should have said, give me half and I'll say <laughs> that I am. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I'll take that as a huge compliment. That Was this pre or post sleeve tattoo? This is post. Okay. This is like probably like four. Well, years. you know what? I've had this since I was like 24. Yeah, 24 ish. Okay. So I had if it was three. tribal, I would have definitely <laughs> bet that you were an MMA <laughs> fighter. Uh, hey, bro. Yeah, let's go meet at the MMA gym. I got my tribal tattoos, yeah. bro. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about MMA for a second? Talk about that. Uh... No. <laughs> all right. All right. When uh, McGregor was going to fight Mayweather, I was on board. Man, I would have like paid that guy. I would have like uh, donated to a Patreon account if he had one. Who's Mayweather's oh, or uh, McGregor's? McGregor. Mayweather okay. can go suck a dick. To this day, <laughs> he can go suck a dick. But May, um, McGregor's shit talking skills are. Above and beyond. Yep. Like, there's nobody better. Especially with the accent, it just hits that much harder. <laughs> He's like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, you don't want to smack, do you? Yeah. Um, but then he lost that fight. I, I lost no love for the guy. Yeah. But then he pulled that dumb shit where he's like throwing barricades at that bus. Yeah. And like people that weren't involved in their little spat got injured. And that's when I was like, dude. You don't respect other people. I can't really respect you. Yeah. So I kind of lost interest. I think Khabib beat him. Yeah. Spoiler but... alert. Hold on. Can I do the spoiler alert? Please. <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. I mean, I have a huge problem with McGregor pulling that stunt uh-huh. with the bust and the throwing all that crap, you know, because that was stupid. Yes. But I almost have a bigger problem with this. Like the new the drama new with Khabib that and night? him. Yeah. First off, Khabib's all butthurt that he was talking about his religion and family. But like, that's what McGregor does. <laughs> it's all it to get in his head. And, and it worked. worked. Also, I've seen a clip of McGregor in the middle of the fight being like, bro, it was just business. Oh. Like, literally being like, like, like apologizing almost, being like, it's just business, man. Like, 
Quit hitting me. It was just <laughs> business. No, yeah. Quit hitting me, you fucking bastard. So, yeah. One, to be stupid enough to go jump out of the fucking yeah. octagon. Jump off into a crowd of people who... Half those people around there right, aren't involved, involved in this in any way. Yeah. Like, but then to have two of your guys go in the ring and, and start a dude taking shots at a guy anything. who just, you know, was in a fight. And lost. Yeah. That's like, that's bullshit. Like, yeah. And now he's coming up, he's coming out and saying that if his, because Dana White's like, the two guys got in the ring were both fighters. They're fired. They're done. They're done. They're never fighting the UFC again. Good. Now Khabib's coming out and saying, if they're fired, I quit. And you're going to fire me too. All right. I'm like, okay. Bye. <laughs> and I really hope Dana White does that. Just be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to set an example now. Uh-huh. Well, there's like, no way he's going to renege on firing two dudes that jumped in the ring to, no, yeah. to attack a guy. Be like, okay, bye. Go fight for Strike Force and make like a quarter of what you're going to oh, make now. Oh, you want to go hit Bellator? Bye. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, keep my $2 million. I'm like, okay, I'll keep you $2 million too. Like, thank you. You're, You're really only hurting yourself nothing. here, you idiot. People, he, he made that. Also, curse. he might need this fucking money now because he might never fight in the USA <laughs> again. Because he might never get a visa in the USA again. Well, the best reason to have such a high purse was because he was fighting someone so high profile. Yeah. A la Conor McGregor. Yep. Seriously, he could have made he could made bank from this. Yeah, he doesn't. There could have been there was there's gonna be a re, there w- I guess I just, there could be a rematch. Oh, if he actually stays with the company, there will be a rematch. But I'm just saying, like, there better not be no after the aftermath garbage yeah, going on. Exactly. But I'm like, now you put that on serious hold, like, yeah, because God knows how long this legal stuff's gonna take to figure out. Well, I mean, even like other MMA uh, companies, they're like, oh, well, this guy comes with drama. Yeah. Do I want that? Yeah. I mean, someone who, somebody will pick him up because yeah. it's like, oh, he's McGee, yeah. Khabib, whatever the fuck his last name is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Khabib. <that's> it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I hope he gets fired and just because I had no respect for that at all. Yeah. It's just, you can't let your temper get out of line. Yeah. Like talk trash at the press conference after the fact. Mm-hmm. Don't jump out of the ring and go fight somebody. Yeah, nothing is like, why, if you were pissed at McGregor for what he said, why'd you take out after one of his guys? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what did, what, Dylan Danis? Something like that, like, yeah. He jumps out and fights that guy? Like, why? It's like you just beat the guy who was talking trash. Like, yeah. it's done. Your beef is squashed. Mm-hmm. If McGregor comes back and talks more trash, which he's going to, <laughs> he's fucking Conor McGregor. It's all he does. Then you rematch him and you squash it again. Mm hmm. Until McGregor's like, okay, he beat me fair and square. He's a better fighter. I have to give him that respect. Yeah, which he would do. You think so? That's what he did with uh, when he lost to uh, Mayweather, Nate Diaz, the first oh. time. When Diaz submitted him after the fight, he's like, hey, he beat me. Like, okay. congrats to him. You That's know, but his buddy's like, I'm not gonna it. lay down and you know, curl up in a ball. I'm like, yeah. gonna go get better. I'm gonna come back. I'm like, okay, that's he, like I respect that. that he talks a lot of shit, attitude. but then when he gets beat, he's like, you know what? Yeah, I got beat. You win. Yeah. All right. Well, we're like fifty. Yeah, this was a long three minutes one. In. We had a lot to say this time. Yeah, but it just kept coming out. Yep, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we cool with closing words now? Yep. All right. Our uh, daily, not daily, I guess weekly. weekly. <laughs> Our weekly words of wisdom. Oh, that's an alliteration. Weekly <laughs> words of wisdom. Always eat your meats and vegetables and potatoes. Yeah, meats and potatoes. Rice If you want to get swole. Yeah. Uh, get your... Oh, yeah, yeah. Track your macros. Track your macros. Uh, I-I-F-Y-M, if it fits your macros, <laughs> go ahead and eat it. Um, don't curl in the squat rack. Or the bench press. Rack your weights. Don't drop your weights. Don't talk shit and lose to Khabib. <laughs> <laughs> don't jump out of the octagon after you win a fight. Yeah, dang it. Don't jump out of the damn octagon. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. I'm like, <laughs> do I or don't I jump out of the <laughs> octagon? <laughs> what did they say on Jekyll and the Shark? They said, oh, no, no don't Don't do that. Out. Yeah. Okay. All right. I no won't good do can it. come of this. Next time, I won't do Fucking it. Fucking idiot. Um, always pet your dog. Carlos. 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 Oh, this is Oh, I got one thing silent. to say. Oh, oh, oh. Um, don't forget to buy your cardboard. 
All right. Next episode. <laughs> no, we're not going to do it the whole episode, but Don't we will. We'll, we will exhibit. <laughs> we'll do an exhibition of our practiced Indian accent for our side company. Oh yeah, well, uh, the side co- uh, <laughs> the side company we sell cardboard and, and, and crowbar. crowbar. Oh, we got Only two crowbars, two crowbar, and cardboard. Uh, uh, extra cardboard comes with proof of purchase. <laughs> That's so messed that we're we're off the air now. <laughs> yep. We just got thrown off we're the air. We're never gonna get gonna get on iTunes now. The FCC <laughs> yeah, yeah. The FCC just shut us down. We're a pirate radio station. <laughs> Alright, but most of all kids, remember the left lane is for passing. Peace. Deuces.